Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Um, today we're doing a video that I've put off for a little while, and that's sort of covering the uh, the German ersatz or Oschilfseitengewehr <laughs> bayonets. Uh, it's a very comprehensive subject, and um, there's some absolute diehard collectors out there, and so much knowledge. And to be honest, I don't really count myself as much of an expert in this particular uh, topic. I did a little bit of reading to build up the confidence to actually do this video. Anyway, um, there's hundreds of different types of ersatz bayonets. I keep saying ersatz is ersatz or something like that, but um, please uh, ignore my mis mispronunciation. Uh, anyway, there's so many different versions of these, and this is just one particular type. This is the one that's been designated as the uh, EB45 bayonet. EB is uh, the designation used by Anthony Carter in his books, and to the best of my knowledge, it um, stands for is as bayonet 45. I'll try to get the correct pronunciation. Now these bayonets were made uh, during the First World War for a number of rifles really. Um, they come with two different diameter muzzle rings. So the small one is for the Gewehr 98 and possibly 88, I can't remember. While the larger muzzle ring is for the 71, the 7184 and possibly the 88. I can't remember which way the 88 goes, big or small. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me. Now, these bayonets were produced by a whole range of um, different manufacturers, and they weren't necessarily your big manufacturers out of Zollingen or Sula or anything like that. These were generally smaller shops that had just the bare minimum amount of machining to be able to produce these kinds of things. Um, and they were just given very rough dimensions, essentially, like a steel handle with a 30 centimeter blade, or maybe they're even just given uh, captured bayonets and told to convert them into something resembling a bayonet that they can use or fix to a rifle. Now, they were used from, uh, well, they were manufactured from 1915 through until just before the end of the war. I believe they did stop at one point, but I could be wrong. And all in all, there was about one million of them made, but that's across up to last count I heard was like 500 different types. So there are so many different types. And I put that down to the fact that at the time, uh, Germany was not one unified country. It was uh, Imperial Germany. It was a whole bunch of um, ruled states and each state might not have had a whole lot to do with the other. And when a, um, a general requirement for uh, Ersatz Bayonet uh, came out, um, they were given uh, rough dimensions. They were all given to different workshops within different states that didn't talk to each other. And that's why they're all so wildly different. Um, this is probably my favorite style. I reckon the, um, the hilt or handle is absolutely gorgeous. Quite a few of the others are just downright ugly, but this is probably one of the nicer looking ones. So these bayonets were made in one of three different kinds of ways. Uh, this one here reflects the first in that it's a bayonet that's made essentially new from scratch from all original components. Um, this is probably one of the nicest ones, I quite like it. Anyway, then there was also bayonets that were converted from uh, captured bayonets. So captured English or French or Russian or whoever they were up against, whatever bayonets they had captured, being substituted, given a new handle, muzzle ring and Mortise to fit to a Gewehr 98 or similar rifle. And finally, uh, they also converted their old uh, bayonets. So the old um, Prussian Imperial German bayonets they had lying around that were no longer in use, they converted them for use with more modern rifles. Now the word uh, ersatz or adsatz, I can't pronounce it, I'm <laughs> terrible. It means substitute in uh, German. So these were just pure and simply substitute bayonets uh, until they could get sufficient stocks of um, Zeitengewehr 98s and 9805s. Uh, these were just there to fill the gap essentially. And um, these were pure and simply very uh, cheaply made, uh, easy to produce. And um, wherever there was gaps in uh, bayonets, like units that aren't necessarily frontline units that don't require the latest and greatest, that's where these would generally end up. In Bavaria, they actually did have an official designation for is that ersatz bayonets? I'm gonna stuff the pronunciation for the rest of the video. I'm sorry for that. And that was the Zeitengewehr 1888/98, and then it also had a ridiculously long second half of the name in German. But the, the um, translation of it is 
Short blade, field gray, iron hilt, to some extent brass hilts. The back of the cross guard, bifactuated. I think that's how it's said. That just means open the end of the muzzle ring is open. Uh, field gray, steel scabbard. So that is an absolute mouthful. But yeah, that's what the official designation or nomenclature for was it in Bavaria. Now, the rough dimensions of ersatz bayonets in general, generally you'll come across them with a 30 to 31 centimetre blade or 12 to 12.2 inches. Uh, you'll find them with a muzzle ring, either big to accommodate the Gewehr 71 or the Gewehr 71 slash 84 or possibly the 88, again, I can't remember, or a small muzzle ring to accommodate the Gewehr 98 and possibly the 88. Finally, they would also come with a steel scabbard. And that was pretty much the only requirement put down. Obviously, that they'll have Mortise as well and function as a bayonet. But um, that's why I have so many different kinds. Like, I've got another one here, and you can see just how different they are. They don't look anything like each other. And there are literally hundreds of different variations of these in all different kinds of configurations, and they're... Some people find them very collectible. Personally, I find them a little bit daunting because I really don't know enough about them. Now, these bayonets were generally issued to like uh, supply column, uh, recruiting units, uh, clothing depots, training units, uh, particularly training units that trained the infantry, uh, machine gun crews, and uh, ersatz uh, battalions. Apparently, they had supplement battalions, so I don't know if they're reserve units or what they are, but Generally, they kept these away from the front line. However, that didn't always work. Plenty of them still found their way to the front line. They were issued to uh, all kinds of soldiers and they were captured on the battlefield. Not that I think this one was. Uh, many of them towards the end of the war were actually exported down to Turkey. So as Imperial Germany started to get sufficient supply or sufficient numbers of uh, Zeitengewehr 98s and 98 05s, they got rid of the uh, ersatz uh, supplement bayonets, substitute bayonets, and they sent many of them, or most of them, down to Turkey, where, as you can see, this one has been, unfortunately, turked. Turked meaning cut down and cruelly adapted for Turkish use, which is a bit of a shame. This initially would have had a 12-inch blade. It has been cut down to a 10-inch blade, and the scabbard has also been cut down. Now, these types of bayonets are classified generally in two ways. So the more common way that I've come across is by the Anthony Car it's Anthony Carter's method. So Anthony Carter wrote a whole bunch of um, bayonet books. They're fantastic read. I highly recommend you get anything written by Anthony Carter. And uh, I think he had four volumes of um, Ursat's uh, bayonet books. I've only got the first one. I'd love to get my hands on the other three, but... That's all I had to go by for this video. And he classifies them uh, with an EB followed by a number. So this is an EB45 as it has the ersatz 98 slash 05 style of handle and a square fuller. There's probably about six or seven bayonets that look very similar to this with minor differences, but yeah, this one's the 45. Now, Anthony Carter, as I said, EB45, EB is ersatz bayonet. And then 45 is the number and it just has, you know, one, two, I think it's classified about 100 or 150 that I've seen, maybe many, many more. The other way these are classified, um, there's a fellow named Otto, I don't remember his full name, and he runs the ebayonet.com website. Now he's done extensive research into Asats Bayonets and um, he's got his own uh, electronic publication it's a cd that you buy from him from his website i still haven't got around to getting it because it's in the states and conversion is terrible i mean it's really cheap i've got no excuse but everyone raves about it being a fantastic resource and great value for money so if you get your hands on that you'll probably know more about these bayonets than me very very quickly so need to get around to that anyway that's sort of the the history behind these um I might jump into the actual construction of this specific one for me. So the blade itself was initially 12 inches. However, it has been shortened down to 10. As you can see, the fuller 
goes all the way through to the point, or it sort of finishes just here, just where the point is. I've looked at photos of the originals and the last point, the last two uh, inches is unfullered, so I dare say that's probably where it finished. Anyway, fullered both sides of the blade. Uh, it's got a uh, false edge, which is unsharpened, and a sharpened true edge. Uh, nice thick spine, very thick, solid blade, and um, despite how crude it might look, this one is very well made. I quite like it. Then we've got our cross guard with a forward swept, I'd almost call that a quillen, I guess it's long enough. And a open muzzle ring. Apparently most of them have an open muzzle ring like this. Then we have our steel handle. I'm uncertain if this is, I think it's one piece. I think, it, yeah, it feels like it's one solid piece with a couple of rivets through it uh, holding the, uh, the tang of the blade, which has been inserted. I think that's how it's been constructed. Then we've got our TO Mortise with our press button. Press button feels just fine. Feels very, very well made actually. That feels better than a lot of the, um, I don't know what you call them, properly manufactured bayonets, I guess. And obviously we've got our uh, hashes through the handle for retention, but um, yeah, very pretty, very nice. I quite like this. Then uh, moving down to the scabbard. So the scabbards, I think there's about six different types. They all have, they're all steel. They all have this style of frog stud. And this is the third type as described by Anthony Carter. You'll see it has these two lines running down the length. They don't serve any function. They're purely decorative. And that's to um, make it look like the, the leather scabbards that um, Imperial Germany was using at the time. So um, two down the front and one down the back. I think it's one solid piece that's just been bent around a mandrel and crudely welded together. The original would have been two inches longer with a ball finale, but as I said, this one has unfortunately been turked. Now, finally, the last thing to talk about is the markings. And um, they're by no means standard, <laughs> standardized. So most of them, or quite a few of them, will have um, proof marks or inspection marks on the spine of the blade, like this one here. I think this one here has a crown over an S from memory. I can't really remember. It's a bit small to see from here. And um, you will never find one of these with an Imperial German property mark being the um, the W for Kaiser Wilhelm or the, the year of uh, acceptance. Uh, for whatever reason, they just didn't do that with these. Um, then uh, for every 200 of these you come across, you'll come across probably only one with a unit marking. Anthony Carter worked out, it's only about 0.5% of these bayonets has a unit marking on them, so that's quite scarce. And it's also quite uncommon for you to find manufacturer's markings. So unit markings would be on the cross guard, manufacturer's markings usually on the Ricasso. However, I've seen photos of examples with the manufacturer marking on the actual handle itself, and even on the scabbard, but no markings like that on these whatsoever. Uh, it's also quite common for you to find serial numbers on these. I'm, it's unclear if they're only Turkish serial numbers or they're Turkish and potentially German as well. I don't know if the Germans did put serial numbers on them, but I haven't seen too many examples. And the ones I have come across, like this one here, all look very Turkish to me. Now, the only other marking I have on this, I actually have two markings on this one, which... I can't find any reference to, and I didn't notice until probably a couple of hours ago. I've had this for quite some time. So it's probably a part of the uh, the manufacturing, but on this side of the handle, I have a D. And then on this side of the handle, where I are, I have an F. So I'm assuming they refer to maybe part of the manufacturing process, but who knows? They could mean anything I wouldn't no, I wouldn't have a clue. As I previously said, there are some pretty hardcore uh, collectors out there who try to collect every single one of these. Um, I am not that hardcore. I've got two of these and I know very, very little about them. It's a very steep learning curve. It's like learning to collect bayonets again from scratch. 
because there are so many and they're made from so many different bayonets. They're made from scratch. They're not very clearly marked, if they're marked at all. So it's, um, yeah, a bit daunting and I've avoided it for a little while. It's like jumping in the deep end of uh, Mauser bayonets in general. It's a very steep learning curve. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got some more information about these, feel free to comment below. If I've made errors, guys, call me out. I want to be called out. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video, though. I have enjoyed doing the research for it, um, as nervous as it made me. Uh, that said, if you enjoy this kind of content, guys, um, please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching, though.